Hi, Darren Mangum here, securities attorney with the law firm of Mangum & Associates. Uh, thanks for watching my YouTube channel. Uh, I like to hop on here and uh, cover common issues that are related to raising capital in the public and private equity markets, uh, especially from a securities attorney's point of view. Um, today, I wanted to talk about um, what should be on your raising capital checklist as you sit and you think, okay, what things do I need to get from where I am right now to getting ready to actually start raising capital from investors. And if you send us your email, if you or if you direct message me, make a comment in the comments below. Um, I'm happy to send you a uh, um, a checklist. This checklist that I'm going to cover, uh, absolutely no, absolutely free, no obligation. Um, but I uh, wanted to cover these uh, seven main things that are important when you consider raising capital, right? Uh, number one, and this may, this, this may sound self-serving, but I assure you whether you hire us or whether you hire somebody else, uh, no, uh, number one, you need to hire a securities attorney. Now, why is that? Um, you need to know the lay of the land, right? There are several dozen regulations uh, and more that cover uh, both federal at the federal level and the state level um, uh, that uh, you need to make sure you get a, a seasoned securities attorney. Uh, again, whether it's law firm of Mangum and Associates, we've been practicing over 24 years now, or anybody else that at least, I mean, there's lots of securities attorneys out there, but I would say a seasoned one with uh, at least at least 10 or more years of experience, if not more so. Um, you know, we've we've weathered the financial 2008 financial crisis. Uh, we've been around the block with the SEC. So, but number one is hire a securities attorney, and again, uh, that is primarily so you can chart out which which um, regulations that are you're going to need to comply with. Uh, what disclosure obligations are there? Uh, what kind of filings are necessary? Because a lot of these 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 next uh, things I'm going to talk about, those can be uh, as you've as you've delineated what the legal framework is for raising capital. Again, raising capital, selling securities, any sort of investment type, whether it's investment contracts or shares of stock, or if it's an LLC interest, or if it's a private fund, right? All of these, all of them have the securities laws that apply, and so you need. To you know, you don't want to like put all your deal together and get ready to go to market, and then find out, oh shoot, I've got to now go back to the drawing board and try to you know retailer my my offering because maybe I didn't consult with a securities attorney ahead of time, or worse, go out there and you know like a lot of people do. We we saw this a lot back in the early days of crypto, people just running out there raising capital and not consider not not talking to a securities attorney first, and it was. Only until after they got in trouble did they have to go back and, oh, shoot, or pay fines. And, and some of them, the SEC just shut them down early. So you definitely want to uh, talk to a securities attorney, uh, priority number one. Uh, and then um, uh, the second thing you'd want to do is to um, obviously gather all your corporate records. Now, if you fired a securities attorney, the corporate records can come along with that. I mean, again, we've taken clients that have come off the street and just, hey, I've got an idea on the back of a napkin. And and we would say, okay, we'll take that napkin and we'll put all the legal uh, framework around it, uh, get all the entities or the corporate uh, filings necessary. You know, so that way you have a solid foundation. Now, if you're already in business, if you already have a corporation, you already have an LLC, uh, you already have a f maybe a fund or a limited partnership, that's great. You know, gather all those documents because those are something that your securities attorney is going to dive into first and foremost. And if you don't have those, that's not a problem. I mean, we'll help obviously create that or whoever you hire would help uh, put together the corporate. So uh, gather all, uh, getting all your corporate records in place. Oftentimes, um, oftentimes that's uh, priority number one, just to make sure there, even if there's an existing corporation you, and you've kept up your filings and all that, sometimes, uh, uh, we've got to modify the operating agreement or maybe revise and restate the operating agreement or maybe even restructure the entity so that it does fit what you're trying to do. Um, 
sometimes just your off the shelf uh, LLC operating agreements aren't really geared toward bringing in investor capital. So that's something you'd want to do uh, right after you hire a securities attorney, do that second. Uh, the third thing is uh, uh, define your team. Uh, who's going to be, uh, and obviously if you're, if you're a one man show, that's great. Uh, that is your team. Now, your team doesn't mean that they also have to have ownership or equity. Uh, you know, your team may be a bunch. You know, you may be. Um, you may have a bunch of advisors or a bunch of consultants that are are key to working with you. A lot of real estate deals are this way, where you've got one one guy or gal that's out there finding the deals, but maybe they need to bring on an accountant or they bring on an attorney and they bring on maybe a realtor and. And they put together this team and helps them, you know, fulfill their objective in developing this property. Maybe they have a con- construction company or what, whatever it is, um, uh, you know, they bring together this team. And uh, that's going to be uh, critical to the next phase, to the next step, which is nailing your story. Uh, what is your story? Um, what, it, what makes you different than other real estate funds? What makes you different from other crypto funds? What makes you different from other pharmaceutical companies? What is your story? Because that's primarily what you're going to be using to market yourself to the investor, right? Raising capital is all about marketing. And obviously, what I've talked about so far is just getting that foundation in place. Now we're talking about, okay, what is what is your story? Because that, that's going to, you know, investors invest in people, right? Like you talked about, I just talked about the team. And they invest in a good story, right? And those those two things. If your if your team is looks solid, looks like they know what they're doing. You look like you know what you're doing. You've got some, you know, you're, you're not just fresh out of high school, <laughs> fresh out of college, never done anything, but you've got a team together to support you. And then here's your story, right? Here's your specific strategy. Here's your niche market. Uh, here's your angle of how you're going to grow the company. This is your story, right? So that's the that's the fourth thing you need, um, and then um, uh, the fifth thing is you need to determine how much capital do you need, right? Um, don't just throw out there. You know, I've talked to potential clients, and they're like, "Oh, you know, I'm going to raise a hundred million dollars." And it's like, "Oh, that's great, that's wonderful," but you know, what's realistic, right? What 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 do you need in the short term to get to get the get the uh, the company off the ground, uh, maybe to acquire that property? What's what's the minimum amount that you need? And then, of course, what's the maximum you need within a reasonable period of time, right? Now, you may need $100 million if you're developing a resort or, you know, some large, you know, commercial enterprise, but that may be done in phases, right? You're, you're typically, if you're starting out, you're not going to raise $100 million off the bat, although it's possible. Um, you know, you're going to say, okay, hey, phase one is maybe a $5 million. We're going to do this acquisition or we're going to acquire this property or we're going to secure this, this license to this intellectual property or, or in, on some, in some cases, that minimum amount, very, very little, like the zero, right? You may, your company may be already operating. You may be already in business. You may, you may be able to put the money to work right away. So really, you know, there is no real minimum, but what is, what is the size of the offering, uh, how much? Because that's also going to dictate um, um, uh, what kind of exemptions or what kind of registrations are needed. Because uh, you know, obviously, regulation crowdfunding, regulation D, uh, you know, they do have certain limitations uh, as to maybe the amount raised and the types of investors. Uh, and that's the that's the sixth thing um, on your checklist is what kind of investors do you want? Um, do you, are you okay with bringing in small investors? The putting in a thousand bucks a pop, or are you looking for a larger accredited investors? Um, that's going to be very important, right? Because that's going to dictate, okay, where are you going to go? Excuse me, you, uh, where are you going to go finding those those investors, right? Um, and so that's going to be, you know, uh, different. What, what kind of at the end of the day, what does you what do you want? What kind of investors are you searching for? And that's going to also play into what kind of exemptions to go after and all that. Um, and then, you know, obviously the, the last thing is to, um, you know, clarify those deal terms that you're going to be offering to the investor, which kind of goes along with your story. Hey, this is our story. This is our team. And here's what we're actually offering you, Mr. or Mrs. Investor, uh, in exchange for your capital, right? Um, 
And obviously, you don't have to know that right off the bat. Oftentimes, some you don't know exactly, maybe you don't know the exact mount, mount you're going to need or raise. Uh, that's in, in other videos, I've talked about having expansion clauses in, the, in, the, in your documents to allow you to have the flexibility to raise additional capital. Uh, and also maybe uh, different deal terms, depending on the amount of investment, um, the timing of the investment. You could certainly structure deal terms to incentivize investors to put in money a little earlier than they normally would. Or uh, obviously, if they put in larger dollar amounts. Anyway, and, that, and that's all these kind of things you don't have to really know right off the bat. But that's uh, some of the things you should um as you go down the checklist, uh, your securities attorney can help you uh, define those deal terms and all of that. So um, anyway, hopefully this checklist is helpful. Again, if you send us a direct message or uh, make a comment or email us, uh, uh, happy to send you a copy of this checklist. And that way you can, uh, as you kind of get your idea together and, and certainly glad to chat about it, uh, feel free to reach out and contact me. Um, uh, if this uh, if this is helpful content, you can feel free to share it and like and subscribe as well. Uh, but um, anyway, uh, these are just the things you kind of need to know as you get uh, get the ball rolling on your capital raising plan. So anyway, thank you for watching, and uh, we'll see you on the next video. Thank you.